Okay, so what you can see here is an assortment of early Ford pedals and pedal assemblies. And there's a few different styles of everything, but the one that stands out is actually this one right here. This is a 1939 Ford pedal assembly. This has the clutch pedal and the brake pedal. You can see the way it works here is your brake pedal is cast as one piece to this little lever arm down here. And that's what interacts with your master cylinder, which mounts back right here. The little push rod connects to right there, and then that pushes in a cylinder of your brake whenever you step on the pedal. Then the clutch pedal back here you can see is pinned to the shaft that runs all the way through here. And when you step on the clutch pedal, it moves this little lever arm on the inside right there. And this is the style that's going to be the most easily adaptable to what I'm using because this, mainly because of this little clutch arm in here, puts my, me right in line with the, the clutch setup that I'm using on my, my bell housing. So this is the same thing here, just without the pedals attached. And this is one big piece of cast iron here. This big mounting flange here would mount to the cross member on the, the Ford frame. Of course, I'm not using that frame. I'm using something that's completely custom. So I need to figure out a completely custom mounting bracket for this. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this center section here from scratch, just this kind of concentric part here and here as one piece. I'll turn it up on the lathe. I'll turn up some bronze bushings to stick in there. And then I'll be able to weld to that nice piece of mild steel any sort of mounting bracket that I want for that. And then adapt that to my custom frame. So that's the plan right now.
Okay, so this is the, the brake pedal right here, just kind of loose right now. This is the clutch pedal, and I have it hooked up with a little linkage I made to this arm right here that connects to the actual clutch fork on the inside of the bell housing right here. So you see, you just push this in, and then that moves that linkage there. Very simple, but it all lines up, and that should work out pretty nicely. Okay, so I kind of I kind of put the camera in here so you can see now that throw out bearing pushes in whenever I push in the clutch pedal. So pretty simple, that's just how it works. Okay, so you can see I got these these few holes drilled here. This is what I'm going to use to um, bolt this plate to one on each side of the frame rails, and this is what the um, tube to mount the transmission is going to be attached to. Um, this is going to bolt on with uh, three eighths inch bolts. I drilled these holes out to half an inch though, because what I'm going to be using is um, these little threaded inserts here. So these just kind of press in and lock in from the back side, and then that gives you a lot more threads there for the bolt to grab onto. So this big hole in the center here is for me to actually uh, slip these behind. And what I'm going to use is this little magnet here. So I'll stick this magnet in through one of these holes. And then put this piece through the center hole onto that magnet there until the magnet is in the center of it. That's right there. Now I have um, this little tube right here with a bolt that I'm going to use to basically just pull it out into the frame rail. And there, now you can see that that is threaded insert there, and that's what I can bolt these plates onto. Okay, so as you can see here, got this tube tacked into place there. It's tacked onto these couple um, brackets there that are bolted onto the frame on each side. And I made up a couple mounts here in the middle to mount the back of the transmission onto, just like that. And I actually made my own um, rubber biscuit mounts here. What I actually use to make those are um, these things right here. These are sticks of rubber. These are actually bristles from what's called a ballast brush, which is used for um, cleaning and leveling railroad tracks. And I found these just alongside the railroad track a, a while ago, and I kept them because I thought they'd be the perfect material for making um, rubber engine mounts and things like that. And it really is. It's nice, nice firm rubber, enough to enough to give it support and enough to um, just absorb any vibration. So that's what I used for making those. And of course, if I want to, I can always just adjust the thickness of those by cutting more off of these things. So now everything is actually mounted in the frame. It's nice to finally get the whole drive line mounted in there. And the next video you'll see me actually making a whole subframe for the floor. And it's just finally starting to come together one piece at a time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.